On 7th April, Singapore entered circuit breaker mode. If we don't go out, if we avoid contact with others, then the virus won't be able to spread. It's as simple as that. With workplaces and schools shut for a month, it was just short of a total lockdown. But a day after the Prime Minister's address, this happened. Scores of people rushing to supermarkets and malls to get some shopping done before the circuit breaker kicked in. Now we all know that this virus is highly contagious and deadly. And as infection rates soar and death rates climb, why aren't most of us trying to stay at home? Why not wait a few days before you buy your supplies? We, uh, we needed it anyway and we figure life still goes on. So as long as we take the necessary precautions, I think that should be fine. That's why I'm wearing a mask. Ah. We're just enjoying <laughs> our last night <laughs> here <laughs> before the so-called lockdown. Uh -huh. We've been told many times that the only way to get through this together is by staying apart. And maybe the way to convince people to self-isolate is to tell them why it's absolutely critical. For some answers, I'm starting with Dr. Leong Ho Nam, who's been tracking the spread of COVID-19 in Singapore since its outbreak. So why is it so important to have physical distancing from other people in this point in time? In order for the virus to spread from one person to another, it must spread droplet or by touch from one person to another. Yep. So if I do not physically touch you, my virus is not able to come to you. So the more physical distancing, the more social distancing there is, there's the less likelihood of the virus spreading from one person to another. Mm -hmm. Has this worked? It has. The classic example comes from Wuhan city and the Hubei province. They instituted very draconian, very strict rules mm -hmm. about physical distancing, such that no one could come and meet anybody else except their own family members. And they, they enforced it, right, as well? They enforced it. This effectively brought the transmission in China vertically downwards, from very high numbers to very low numbers yeah. very quickly. If we were to able to practice that in Singapore, we can effectively stop it. Mm -hmm. This is a very simple domino to illustrate the transmission dynamics. Mm -hmm. It tends to suggest that every virus infected individual there is, it transmits to two. But in truth, this virus tends to spread one to two to three people. And all this could happen every cycle of about five days. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, in about 15 days, you can actually have more than 10 individuals who are infected with the virus. Very simply, the domino effect shows this. So this person can pass on very quickly to the rest of them just like this. New research shows that one person with seasonal flu can infect up to 14 people. But one person with COVID-19 can potentially infect 59,000 others. By touching objects and failing to clean our hands, COVID-19 travels from our fingertips to our eyes, our mouths and up our noses. It travels through the air clinging on to millions of virus-laden droplets. And the source of this projection? The common cough of the mighty sneeze. Different countries have different advisories on how far apart we should stand from each other. In Singapore, it's one metre. In Australia, it's 1.5. In Canada, it's two. I want to test how far humans can project droplets of COVID-19-laden saliva. Helping me out, is my producer, Abi. We're going to have you positioned uh, against these mannequins. The first mannequin is 50 centimetres away from mm -hmm. you. 
The second mannequin is one meter away from you, and the last one is two meters away from you. We're going to make you sneeze three times. But before we make you sneeze, we're going to make you drink some dyed water. Sounds fun. I'll drink dyed water, and with the help of some pepper, sneeze out the contents of my mouth. The first mannequin was placed about 50 centimeters away from my sneeze. As you can see, there are very, very visible droplets all over the place. Yeah, these are quite like obvious and, and pretty fat too. Also near the neckline, another group of droplets. And at the chest area, you can also see another set of droplets. Even down the t-shirt, you can see more droplets. So it's actually quite a big scatter of droplets all over the torso. The second dummy is one meter away, the official length of Singapore's social distancing policy. When you come to the second one, there's a droplet here, here, and lastly over here. But they're far smaller compared to the other droplets that we saw in the earlier one. Yeah. But there are still some droplets. It kind of means that it can still reach a meter distance. The final mannequin was placed two meters away. So for the last one, you can clearly see that there isn't any droplets. This doesn't mean that there can't be droplets, but from a visibility point of view, no droplets from your sneeze manage to reach the mannequin. No visible droplets? Exactly. There might be invisible droplets, smaller droplets for the eye can see. So yeah. we would need a microscope to tell. But compared to the others, this is a far safer distance, which means a two meter is potentially a safe distance that people should consider to move as compared to one meter, or definitely not the uh, less than one meter mark. Recent research from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology reveals very different results. <coughs> they discovered coughing can spread droplets as far as six meters, and sneezing as much as eight and some droplets can stay suspended in the air for up to 10 minutes. Even before Circuit Breaker was imposed, I've heard about an increasing number of Singaporeans who have chosen to self-isolate. Hi Amy, hi Chandran. Actress Amy Cheng and her family chose to stay at home a week before Circuit Breaker kicked in. They went out only when absolutely necessary for work, school, and food. So why are you guys um, doing this self-isolation? It, it seems to be the most logical thing to do. Medical experts, uh, you know, world leaders, uh, not just here, but all over the world are suggesting that. So um, for ourselves too, um, I mean, I'm in the 60s, so I better be careful. How has your experience been like so far? This has really put a spin on, on our lives because of you know the kind of situations that we're in, um, for example, our younger son is uh, having his PSLE end of the year. So that's another oh. additional factor to worry about and how to manage. Our older boy, he's more of a social person. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've shared with him that, you know, maybe to be responsible, really to just stay home as much as he can. And I can see he's really, really trying. So uh, it's not easy, but yeah, it's just one of those things that you just have to do. So would you encourage um, others to do the same and why? We don't have a choice now, right? The rules are in place to do self-isolation. We don't want another shutdown. Then uh, we got to uh, err on the side of caution. You just got to do it. Slowly, slowly, very slowly. Seeing Amy and Chandran with their boys in self-isolation does make me feel sad about the current state of our world. Now I need to find out how we can survive being cooped up in our homes. I have packed at least 10 bags of things and clothes that I'm going to donate to Salvation Army. I don't watch the news. I don't read the newspapers. I think that keeps me sane.
as our infection rates soar, Singapore is staying at home to break the circuit. But some Singaporeans are naturally worried. I'm more concerned for my family and friends who are still required to um, head to work where they have a greater chance of like uh, interacting with people. All this chatter on the news, on WhatsApp chat groups, about people close to me being paranoid, and in turn that makes me paranoid. The fear, I think, is worse than the actual virus. But I think fear is a little necessary when it comes to the current situation. I'm investigating what it takes to isolate yourself from the growing community spread of COVID-19. So how do you keep a positive mindset in this time of crisis? I'm meeting up with psychologist Donna Sloan. So what are some of the ways that you know, people can actually stay mentally healthy during this period of time? There are four things one can do. First uh, is to uh, start a new routine. Right? Well, you know, so, so if you're not going to stay at home, um, you know, schedule out your daily activities. Try to imitate it as if it is your everyday life. Number two is engage in uh, meaningful activities. Do socialise, like some friends and I do online lunch meetings, mm -hmm. so by eating and talking, so that's very helpful. The third thing is very much about uh, keeping yourself uh, active. So find ways to exercise at home. Some people practice meditation and that's very, very helpful for the body and mind. Right. And the last thing you could actually do is to uh, actually avoid some of the uh, negative news. Let's look at some of the more positive aspects of things. We don't know when it's going to end. Now, how do we cope with that kind of feeling? I think a lot of people that I've met, when they talk about the COVID-19, they, they are talking as if it's going to stay forever. So we need to reframe and think about it's going to be temporary, that this will end. Um, the situation that I'm in right now will end eventually, someday. Like most of you, I've been at home since the 6th of April, aside from work. Now, besides being a TV presenter, I am also a performing musician. So, in order to keep myself occupied and connected at the same time, I've resorted to doing this. I want to know how other Singaporeans are coping. I have accumulated uh, so much things uh, over the years and I always say one day I'll clear it. And the day has come, uh, 10 days, I have packed at least 10 bags of things and clothes that I'm going to donate to Salvation Army. Just having someone to talk to just relieves a lot of the stress and also talking to my mom, checking up on everyone, how they're doing and then knowing that we are all in this together. I don't watch the news, I don't read the newspapers, I don't click on it if I don't wish to. I think that keeps me sane because there's so much paranoia going along and you, you can't help but have that infect you as well. Another message we keep receiving is to be constantly aware about our hygiene. So when you're stuck at home, especially with a member of the household who is on stay-home notice or could be a potential virus carrier, Hygiene is vital to prevent the spread of COVID-19. To help me show how to keep our homes virus-free, I've invited N. Basria Banu over. Banu, the hygiene expert. She has over 10 years in cleaning management. In case you think I'm breaking the law, this was filmed pre-circuit breaker. But her tips are more useful than ever now that we're going to be spending more time at home. Sanitize all the high-touch surfaces like switchboard, switches, oh, yeah. they say every day we use, and also remote control. Mm -hmm. And TV remote control, this is everyday use also. Another high-touch point is the shared bathroom and toilet. After every use, what you have to clean is the seat. Yeah. Okay, this is the most important. So do I have to clean this every time after I use the bathroom? Yes, definitely. The flush button need yeah. to clean every okay. day. And whenever you flush, yeah. make sure the lid is down. Oh, okay. Why is that? If the lid is open, whenever we flush, the air droplets will go in the air. Not only the air droplets, but also the bacteria, germs, and the viruses. So that's why it's a good advice. 
to bring it down and flush it. For my kitchen, what do I need to be mindful of? Now we're going to talk about the sponge. It's advisable to change the sponge at least once a week. How you sanitize the sponges, you can throw it in the uh, dishwasher mm -hmm. or washing machine or even zap it in a microwave oven for one to two minutes. Now I'm going to show you how to sanitize the high touch points. First, we're going to rinse off the towel. Yeah. Again, we're going to spray the chemical onto the towel. Stove knobs. So this is everyday use. Yeah. Then all the handles. And this is the rubber opening. Mm -hmm. And also the tap handles. And how to keep clean this towel. Yeah. This towel need to change every day. Oh. And wash with soap and a little bit of bleach and let it dry in the hot sun. That's how you kill the germs. Manu, this is the area that I usually dry my laundry. Do I need to disinfect my clothes before I put them in the laundry? Yes, advisable to soak the dirty clothes in a pail of water with some detergent. Soak it for 5 to 10 minutes. And every once a week, uh, try to run the washing machine at high temperature to kill the growth of germs. For cleaning surfaces, Banu recommends using diluted bleach or cleaners with at least 70% alcohol and disinfectant. Along with a spotless home, you also need an active body. I'll show you some moves that everyone can do at home, no matter what your age or fitness level. So how are we feeling, Derry? I'm feeling a little bit of a burn already, man. Singaporeans have been told to stay at home amid the escalating number of COVID-19 cases. But days without being outdoors or having access to a gym can be incredibly frustrating. To show me how to keep in shape, I've got a house call from fitness instructor Russell Subdu. Hi Russell, how are you man? Hi, oh, this one I'm not touching yet. <laughs> He's going to show me how to get a full body workout that both the young and old can do at home. Alright, first one, mm. you gotta do a simple warm up yeah. to get your joints ready. Because that's the most important part. Okay, don't move. So we minimize your injuries. Shoulder rolls back. Shoulder rolls. Just go back and then go front. Yep. And then just get your body rotated like that. After warming up, Russell takes me through a simple home workout routine. Now it's just squat with a stool. Right, it's simple. Go backward, sit on a stool. Get back up. You can hold on the wall. Mm -hmm. Just to be safe, especially the elderly. See, they won't fall because they have the wall. Okay, right. Back on the wall. Right. Back on the wall. Okay. Now slowly slide your leg forward. Yeah. Simple. Just have your back. Find a spot first. Mm -hmm. If it is too easy, go back down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's alright for me. Yeah. At yeah, the same right. time, make sure you activate that core. Yeah. Stand on the wall. The best option is 30 seconds for first timer. So how are we feeling there, Ray? I'm feeling a little bit of burn already, man, on my, you know, on my so, lower limbs. The routine involves wall squats, push-ups, tricep presses, and some stretching. Enough for an adult male like me to burn about 150 to 200 calories. Not as much as if I were to run or swim, but some movement is better than nothing at all. Oh, nice. Prata is my motivation. So okay. what do you say? Prata in, prata out. Ah, that's good. Simple exercises give your day normality and structure. Research also shows that regardless of age, daily exercise maximizes your chances of fighting off viruses and infections. I do uh, 200 push-ups a day. Uh, I do kettlebell swings. I do um, uh, wrist rotation exercise. I also do pull-ups, except that I got so heavy I broke my pull-up bar. This is a softball, and what you do is, when you're sitting down watching uh, your computer screen for too long, you just take this, sit on a high, hard chair, and put it under your butt. And you basically roll around on it, 
and it really helps to soften up some of those like you know hamstring muscles um, that could be pulling on your back when you come to my age you know all this sort of stuff is uh, wonderful as of 8th april all schools shifted to home-based learning the playgrounds are pretty much closed now i don't have children of my own but i can imagine how taxing it must be for parents to have children kept at home bursting with energy I'm meeting the Tan family. In March, after returning from Bangkok, they were placed on a government mandated stay home notice for 14 days. Hey, hey. Hi, Alan. How are you? So, we're keeping a safe distance, and it's face masks for everyone. The Tans are used to this new isolation regime. I want to find out if they have any tips for other families on how to keep young kids occupied at home. With circuit breaker period in place now, I'm pretty sure parents would find this useful. How did you actually manage to keep the kids occupied? Okay, we come up with some schedule of uh, what they should do every day. Every morning they'll wake up, they'll have a short rest before my elder boy starts doing his uh, schoolwork. After that, my wife makes sure that he reads a book every day, alternating between Chinese and English. After this is done, he will have some me time. Every evening, except uh, Sunday, we will have a group exercise together for like 20-30 minutes. After that, dinner and they are almost done for the day. Okay. It's just about being creative and finding new things, finding interesting things to keep these restless boys occupied. Were there any change in the dynamics of your family? I was surprised that we didn't have a big quarrel at all, big argument at all. I think probably because we felt that, oh, no, we are in this together. <laughs> We, we can't run out of it anyway, yeah. so let's not antagonise each other. And what were the positives that you took away? By staying at home, we are almost very sure that we will be safe from any infection. That's for sure. Home is the safest. Yeah. Don't kick off this thing in a negative mood. Be positive, you know, take it as a time for the whole family to really uh, spend time together. Since I've investigated life in isolation, I've come to realize there's a common theme running through everything. We can't change what's happening in the wider world, but we can make positive changes in our lives and help others around us too. So be kind, take care of each other and yourselves too. Stay safe, people! I wanna stand with you on a mountain. I wanna bathe with you in the sea. Can you hear the leg? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> this forever, until the sky falls down on me. <laughs>